it also makes the part adaptive. So now what we can do is that same exact thing. So we'll just do center to center, apply that. We'll notice that the line now adjusts its length to be the correct length in this particular position and it's still adaptive. Now here's the real, the real thing that you want to be careful of with adaptivity. Um, adaptivity is great to do some concept designs and figure out something like the length of this link but you don't always want it to be adaptive. At some point you want to manufacture this, you want to lock it down so that something can't change on it without you knowing. So the reason that we have an icon at the sketch level and the part level is at any time I can come back and say well now I want to uncheck adaptivity and let's see if we can do it in the graphics window so you can see uh, we're not going to get that up but basically you can just right click uncheck adaptivity so now that that sketch stays adaptive but it's not going to allow me to make any any modifications in length at this point but now what I can do everything's grounded down so let's take a look I'm going to unground both the knob and that front valve so now I can start moving this back and forth. I have contact in place still, so I could turn that off. But you'll notice that I can dynamically drag this. Now if, if for some reason, let's pull this back, let's say that we wanted to change uh, maybe the position of this cylinder here. So then it would cause an issue for us because it needs to be shorter or longer. We're going to notice that we get an error message because it's we've turned adaptivity off. So let's just move that a little bit. When we return out, we're going to notice that um, it didn't give us an error because we don't have those constraints on. But let's um, let's try that one more time. Let's let's lock this down. We'll ground these again so that they can't move. What happened is we just changed the location and it just pushed that um, that part or pulled it back a little bit. So let's do the exact same workflow. Let's come in here now that everything's grounded. It's not going to allow it to move. Let's make sure we get the right sketch. Hopefully this is making sense. Uh, if I drag this over there, it's going to change the length of that line. We're going to notice when we do this that it should give us an error message. I'm going to accept that. And the reason for it is because we've turned the adaptivity off on that link. So now it doesn't really know what to do. It's, it's, it's not, it can't honor those constraints. So I'm going to come in, right click, turn the adaptivity on. You'll notice that it resolves rechanges the length of that line and then I'm going to turn the adaptivity back off. So now it's just a regular part similar to what you would do with parameters. So from here we're just going to come in and we want to turn this into a full 3D part. So let's just edit that sketch and in this at this point you know we may just want to draw a couple of lines and we'll swing a, an arc out here, draw another line and then at this point we'll probably want to add some constraints so it may be that we want to add something like a vertical constraint in fact um, let's do a coincident constraint first let me just drag it over it's probably easier to do that and I'll do that in both places Uh, drag that a little. Yeah, it looks like we will need a coincident constraint. It's small enough, it's hard for me to see all the constraints, but let's just do coincident there. So that now I can drag this around, although as soon as I return it's going to go back to its original size. It knows what size it needs to be. But I can add a couple of dimensions here. We'll just do something like 0.25 for the diameter here. And then we can create a couple of circles and we're probably going to have some interference, but I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. Let's just extrude this out. So we'll just use my extrude, give it uh, maybe the direction that we want, the thickness. So now we've taken it from a 2D sketch into a 3D part. When we return, we're going to notice that it adjusts to the right size. Now it's sectioning this. If we went back to that view rep where we were default, we'll see everything together. But now let's unground these components and I can just drag this and we can see what it looks like. So we've been able to use adaptivity. It's a pretty simple little idea but we've been able to use adaptivity to really create that line, constrain it in place. We didn't know how long it needed to be 
and then lock it down and when we're done we can turn on that turn off that adaptivity and even though it's a, a 3d model at this point you know if we wanted to pull this in lock some of this geometry down we'll just ground it ground it we'll do this one more time and then if I edit um, if I edit this part even though it's a 3d model it doesn't really matter we'll we'll drag this back I don't think I have it adaptive right now so we'll get that that error message didn't want to convert it to sheet metal um, there we go we'll return out and um, looks like I did leave it adaptive but that that uh, 3d model also are the the features the solid updated as well so it's not just updating the 2d sketch geometry it's updating everything so hopefully that's beneficial hopefully those of you that have tried adaptivity and maybe haven't been successful or you've had questions ab about it that uh, that will certainly help now I can only use it adaptive in one assembly so from time to time you may try to use that in another assembly and make it adaptive it tells you it's adaptive somewhere else now if by chance you don't want it adaptive in another assembly you want it adaptive in this one there is a way that you can you can do that if I go into the tools document settings you'll notice underneath my modeling that I can it's checked adaptivity used in assembly now if I uncheck this then it basically tells it that it's not being adaptive in this assembly and I can use it elsewhere so I can use its occurrence wherever I want but it can only be controlled adapt through adaptivity in one particular assembly so hopefully that was a great little tip if you feel uh, if you've got some other ideas some things that you'd like to see in the future please feel free to send them my way as I, I think I close in all the podcasts we always like feedback we like to hear things that are working well things that aren't working well and tips and tricks that you might like to see in future podcasts so with that over and out